that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Hey there, YouTube. I'm back again for another How to Play video. Today, I'm very excited to teach you how to play the Wizard of Oz from Ravensburger. This is for one to four players, ages 10 plus, take about 15 minutes per chapter. Now, the first thing I need to tell you is this is a very unique game, as the rules are going to change from chapter to chapter to chapter as you progress through the Wizard of Oz mission. However, I am going to go over the basic rules of the game, and I'll show you how to set up the first chapter right now. So the first thing you're going to need to do is open up your chapter book to chapter one. Next, you're going to get these challenge completed tokens right here and just place them to the right side of the book where everyone can reach them. Now, if it's your first time playing, you should have two separate piles of these cards right here. One which only has 20 and comes in a bag like this, and one which is a slightly thicker stack. You're going to want to shuffle up these piles separately. First, you have the story card pile, which is just going to have courage, heart, brains, wonder, and magic. And they're all going to look like this. You shuffle those up, place those off to the right side. Next, you have your 20 story cards. You'll know that they're story cards because they'll have a special icon on the bottom right there with the book. Shuffle these up and keep these separate from your story deck. These are special cards you'll get to draw throughout the game. They'll do a whole bunch of wild, wacky things. Next, you're going to want to grab your Chapter 1 plot cards, which will all have the same back. Shuffle them up and place them where everyone can reach them. Make sure that each player has a handy-dandy player reference card, which they'll cut next to them. And with that set up, you're ready to move to the actual chapter itself, which is going to have its own unique things we're going to do, but we'll walk you through it right now. So with your shuffled story deck, each player is going to get four cards. So we'll set up a two-player game right now, four cards here and four cards there. Since this is a completely cooperative game, I'd highly recommend playing with your cards face up. Next, the instructions tell us to play Dorothy in the pigsty, so we'll take her little mini and put it right there. Place the horse and cow in their own respective spaces and then it says to place the hog and the chicken tokens as well, but place them unhappy with the white side up. Place the twister counter in the start spot up here. Place the farm hands in the haystacks. And then last, place the wagon broken side, white side, right here on the wagon spot. In this particular instance, the player who has most recently been to a farm is going to go first. And then on your turn, you're going to do a variety of things, which we're going to cover in a second. But then it goes clockwise around the table. However, before we get into what you're actually going to do on your turn, let's explain a little bit more of the rules and the special challenges and how they work. So each chapter is going to have its own unique rules. You want to read those out loud when you first start. So in this one, it talks about how all the animals and the wagon itself have a happy side, a.k.a. the green side, and a not happy side, the white side, or in the case of the wagon, the broken side. And the way to fix that is by moving the farm hands around the different spots and just moving them next to the things, and then they will fix it automatically just by being near it. So for this particular chapter, the farm hands can be moved just like a regular character. On the bottom left of the book, it's going to tell you exactly how you will lose this chapter. So we will lose this chapter if the twister moves all the way to the end, aka the farmhouse, or if all of the animals are on their grumpy sides. So two different loss conditions on this particular chapter. Now, moving over to the right side, these are the challenges that we're going to have to complete, and then we'll talk about the actions you can take on your turn. And when it comes to challenges, it's really quite simple. Just read the text in the spot, and it will tell you exactly what you do. So this is the song challenge. In every single chapter, you're going to have a song challenge. So in this particular one, Dorothy must be in the haystacks, this spot right here, and then the player can discard a number of green wonder cards and get that special reward. But no matter how many we discard, we will get the complete token on here, which is the most important part. But we'll talk a little bit about that later. The important thing to remember about the song challenges are pay attention to the color that you're going to have to discard, because that will change from chapter to chapter. Next, we have the shiftless farmhands. Each animal must be on its happy side, and the wagon must be fixed. And if we do that, and the player, whoever's turn it is, turns in a yellow, red, and blue card, it discards those, we will get a special reward, which in this case is to draw a card from the special deck, which, remember, is a separate deck from the story deck. Now, drawing cards from the special deck is particularly good, though, because once you use those cards, they actually go into the discard pile of the story deck. So as you progress through chapters, you're going to unlock more special cards, and they'll just stay in the game. The next challenge says Dorothy must be at Professor Mabel, so we have to get Dorothy all the way over to this spot right here. And then whoever's turn it is has to discard a blue, green, and green card, at which point we will receive the reward, which is we draw a card from the special deck. And in Chapter 1, our last scenario is get to the house. Dorothy must be in the farmhouse. You must have completed all of their challenges. 
So if we can get Dorothy to the farmhouse and we have completed all of our other challenges and we turn in a blue and yellow card, then we will complete this chapter and we'll move on to the next chapter. And how that works is you remove all the pieces from the board, turn to the next chapter in the book, and follow these instructions right here because there will be a different setup for chapter two. But now let's get to the meat and potatoes of the game of what you're actually going to do on your turn. And luckily we have a massive player reference card you can do. Now the first thing I want to remind you in this game is you don't control a character. You are not Dorothy. You are not the farmhands. Everyone will be moving everyone on their turns if they'd like to. So the first thing you always do is move. And you can move a single character up to two spaces. And you don't have to move if you don't want to. Or you can move two characters one space. So in this instance, I could go Dorothy, one, two. Or I could go farmhand, one. And then move Dorothy, one space. So at the beginning of every turn, always going to move. Next, you get to the storytelling phase. And this is a very willy-nilly, freeform chunk of your turn. Because you're going to have five different actions you can do. And you can do them in whatever order you want to. So first, you can discard any number of cards and move one character one space per discarded card. And when you do decide to do this action and you discard a card, that just goes into the discard pile of the story deck. The next thing you can do is you can complete challenges. And once again, you need to read the challenge, make sure you're on a special spot because some of them require that, and then make sure you're discarding whatever cards are required. However, if you're able to complete the challenge, then you put the completed token on the challenge and you gain whatever the reward is. Next, you can play special cards. And all the special cards are read the text on the card and follow the instructions. Once you play a special card, once again, it goes to the discard pile of the story deck because that will now be a regular story card for the remainder of your campaign. The next action you're able to take is to trade a single card with any other player. And just fair warning, if you consider playing this game solo, you might want to play it two-handed because they don't have any specific rule to deal with the fact that if you're playing solo, you can't trade a single card with another player. And the last action you could take, and the one that you'll take least frequently is to use a Glinda the Good Witch favor, which are these stars right here, to restart the chapter, or to draw three cards from the story deck, which will help you out in whatever you're trying to do. However, these stars are very difficult to come by and typically require you to discard a lot of cards on the challenges. These stars are super important, though, because if you ever lose a chapter, you're actually supposed to go back to chapter one. So after a player has completed their storytelling, they've done that in whatever order they want, they can do any or all of the actions, you're going to draw two cards from the story deck, place them into your pile, and if your story deck ever runs out, just shuffle the discard pile and boom, you got yourself a new story deck. And then you're going to draw a card from the plot deck. And once again, depending on what chapter you are, you're going to have different things that will happen. So in this particular chapter... It's going to have the farm hands moving around, the animals getting sad, and the twister moving closer to you. But once you've completed all the actions, you're going to set that off to a discard pile next to the chapter deck. If you have more than six cards in your hand and you're the active player, you have to discard back down to six cards. And then it moves to the next player on the left. So there's a grand total of six chapters in the game. Now, if you ever want to pause the game, you can follow these steps. You finish the current chapter, then you mark wherever chapter you're on. Then you're going to take all the player's hands all the discard pile for the story cards, the entire story deck, and you're going to mix those all together, shuffle them up, and make sure you keep them separate from this pile right here. Think of special cards as cards that once you get them, you kind of unlock them for future games. Then you're going to place any favor tokens that you've happened to earn, and make sure you place them with your story deck. I'd recommend just putting them in their own separate bag. And when you're ready to resume your game, follow the initial setup, ignoring the part where it tells you to remove special cards from the story deck, Set up whatever chapter you're on, and you're ready to rock and roll. But that's how you're going to play the Wizard of Oz adventure book game from Ravensburger. If this helped you out, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Also, consider subscribing as I teach new games all the time. But go have some fun, and thanks for your time, YouTube. This video is brought to you by all of my amazing Patreon supporters, and I would love it if you would join their ranks and have your name immortalized in the end of many of my videos for the end of time. But consider for only a dollar a month, and as always, thanks for stopping by.